Hello and uh, welcome to ET Auto. We are in conversation with Mr. Girish Wag, Executive Director at Commercial Vehicle Major Tata Motors. Girish, thanks for spending your time. Pleasure. Uh, Girish, we are here at the 64th annual session of SAM, uh, where the, the essence, the flavor seems to be about sustainability, uh, sustainability, uh, uh, sustainability in terms of transportation in business. But uh, if we take off on the theme of sustainable transportation, uh, the commercial vehicle industry uh, has a scope to be a major contributor to this transition. And uh, as a market leader, you have showcased you know, your efforts. Just could you draw a picture for, for us in terms of where does where do things stand at the industry level and for Tata Motors in terms of kind of you know, making this evolution into more sustainable transportation? Okay. So, Sumantra, if you don't mind, I'll give a bit bit of a longish uh, sure. <coughs> response to this. So. Uh, as far as sustainability is concerned, at Tata Group, you know, we have embarked upon Project Alingana, which is embracing a sustainable future. Now, as a part of that, Tata Motors commercial vehicles, uh, we have announced our target to become net zero greenhouse gas emissions in 2045. Now, as a part of this sustainability, we are working on three pillars. First is net zero greenhouse gas emissions. Second is pioneering circularity. And third is bio preserving biodiversity. Now this more or less addresses most of the sustainable development goals. Now as far as the greenhouse gas emissions is concerned, we have to work on two fronts. One is the emissions within our facilities. And second is the emissions of the products which will run with our customers. So let me first talk about the facilities. So we are working towards transitioning all our facilities to 100% renewable energy before the end of this decade. Okay. So this is well on track and there is a good amount of investment also being done to ensure that we migrate to 100% renewable energy. Now as far as products are concerned. Sorry, they're talking about production but in your network in commercial vehicle, but you have four plants or five plants? Five plants. Five plants. Five plants. Five plants. Yeah. And if you include, you know, two of our subsidiaries, then almost seven. Okay. So I think all these plants will move towards that. Now coming to products. So I think here uh, the government has been very supportive and has also been pushing transition to zero emission vehicles, which is the right thing to do. And as a part of this, I think we have been working on zero emission technologies across, right? But we also know that this transition is going to happen through alternate fuels. So natural gas, whether it is compressed natural gas or liquefied natural gas, and also all some fuels which are coming in terms of ethanol or methanol or bio CNG. So we are working on uh, fuel agnostic platforms wherein they will of course work on diesel, petrol as fuel, but they will also be able to migrate when required to natural gas, flex fuel, and of course electric. Now it, even in zero emission, we are working on three technologies. One is battery electric, then fuel cell electric, and then hydrogen internal combustion engine. Now as far as battery electric is concerned, this is a front runner for uh, you know, closed loop applications, light duty applications. And we've already launched uh, buses as well as uh, ACE in small commercial vehicles. So we now have almost 3,000 uh, vehicles, buses, which are running on road, which cumulatively have covered more than 200 million kilometers or 20 crore kilometers, okay. right? ACE, we have more than 5,000 vehicles running on road, which have cumulatively covered more than 43 million kilometers or around 4.3 crore kilometers. So we have very good experience under the belt. We are also working on battery electric in heavy commercial vehicles for closed loop uh, <coughs> defined load applications. So these have been piloted in certain applications. We are getting good feedback, which will help us to then spread it wider. I think the initiatives from the government in terms of fame incentive, which is a demand side incentive, mm. and the production link incentive, which is a supply side incentive, has been instrumental in driving this push towards zero emission fuel. And uh, we therefore expect the government to continue. Of course, PLI has just been launched, so it will continue. FAME, uh, after FAME 2, has taken a pause. Uh, but we also know the government is talking about coming up with FAME 3 soon. And we are actually requesting the government 
to not just include the segments of fame 2 into fame 3 but, but also add n2 and n3 mm. category of right. trucks as also private buses mm. you know because these are uh, high polluting kind of uh, vehicles and which will help this green transition so this is what we are expecting from uh, the government to ensure we continue on this track or more so accelerate it uh, so that's on uh, the first pillar of uh, uh, you know greenhouse gas emissions reduction coming to circularity i think we have been working uh, in our facilities for becoming net water positive already three of our plants are net positive on water we have also been working on migrating towards zero waste to landfill so i think all these targets will be meeting before the end of this decade we are also working on overall material circularity mm -hmm. and uh, end of life responsibility of the producers i think we are working on all this to ensure that we are not just compliant but actually lead on circularity agenda and finally biodiversity is also uh, an important agenda for us as a part of project talingana so here in we have taken some you know signature projects which will help us to you know create a big impact on uh, some of uh, the biodiversity elements right. And here, uh, we, uh, earlier in the day, we heard the um, uh, Union Minister, um, uh, Mr. Gadkari, also talking about no, uh, encouraging the industry to invest in scrappage facilities. Yes. Tata Motors is one of the, uh, you have one if I'm not wrong, right? Actually, we have five now. Oh, five. But so, so that's a very good question. And, you know, as a part of our circularity agenda, mm. we are coming up with uh, our scrappage centers under the brand Rewire. Rewire. Tata Rewire, which is recycle with respect. Okay. So... As you are aware, I think we have come up with a very well-established process with uh, international inputs. And Do you have a partner for that? So, it was more of a uh, knowledge partner. Mm. Uh, we took all the inputs, we have now defined the process, the IT and digital systems, and it is a franchise model. Mm. So, our channel partners are becoming our partners for the rewire centers also. We already have five scrappage centers which are operational. These are company owned? or uh, These franchise. are franchised, franchised. but yeah. under the Tata Rewire brand. Okay. And we have additional 10 where we have already given uh, letter of intent and the work on those uh, scrappage centers is underway. Okay. So in this uh, network of 15, by when will they be up? Uh, so uh, five already uh, working five. gives us a capacity of around 80,000 vehicles per annum. I think these additional 10 should be operational maximum in 12 months from now. And that will give you a total So that will give us uh, additional capacity of, uh, you know, around 120 to 130,000. Okay. Plus the current one. So current we will cross around 200,000 uh, capacity. Okay. That's good to know. Uh, coming to the business side, uh, the commercial vehicle industry domestic is, is still uh, on, uh, on a soft period. Uh, no? good. So, uh, and uh, do you see any kind of, you know, green shoots in terms of, you know, the resurgence and how do you see the rest of the year? Yeah. So, uh, see, when we started this financial year, the outlook was that in Q1, we will actually decline. Mm -hmm. In the industry, volumes will decline uh, because of the general elections. Uh, the past general elections, if you see the trend, a quarter before and quarter after, generally the volumes decline. But uh, we were for a positive surprise. And in fact, in Q1, the volumes grew by 2%. And in this, the volume growth was led by buses and vans. Uh, which grew by healthy, you know, 20 odd percent and then intermediate light medium commercial vehicles. Heavy commercial vehicles declined a bit, but single digit and so did small commercial vehicles. But if you see now July and August, I think we have seen very heavy rains across the country. And uh, generally this seasonal uh, stoppage of mining, some of the infrastructure projects. So I think that led to an impact on uh, the volumes. Uh, so, if you see the diesel consumption, which is a good barometer of, uh, you know, trucking, actually went down by 15% in uh, July and August as compared to Q1, okay. right? We internally track the number of mm. kilometers run by mm. trucks every day. So, that also declined mm. by around double digit. But we are already seeing green shoots in the beginning of September. And we expect, therefore, that while till end of August, the industry has declined by 4%. Mm. We expect that with the festive season and, uh, you know, rains now uh, reducing, mm -hmm. the demand should pull up again and we should see a good H2. And finally, therefore, at the overall financial year level, I'll be very happy to actually see a flat 
kind of overall volumes but within that i do expect growth in buses and vans i do expect some growth in intermediate light medium commercial vehicles i think heavies and small commercial vehicles may see yeah, a single digit uh, decline okay. and lastly uh, <coughs> uh, girish in one of our you know, earlier uh, interactions you had mentioned about tata motors you know, and uh, periodically how you revisit your strategies and one of them you said was pivoting from a market share at any cost to more sustainable growth even though it may uh, entail perhaps you know missing some opportunities are you progressing well on that front is it absolutely yielding dividends no, no absolutely are you losing any kind of you no know, ground anywhere because no, discounting is still a yeah. very inherent practice no, but i think see you know we have been pushing this agenda uh, for all the stakeholders creating value for all the stakeholders and i think the pricing discipline has been pretty strong in the market and we will continue with this and in fact in heavy commercial vehicles intermediate light medium as well as buses and van you also grown the market share over the previous year and you know even with this decline that one has seen in last two months there has been pretty good discipline in uh, pricing so i think this is a big change which has happened in our way of working and we will continue in this direction so okay. i think the focus is on delivering value to the customer okay by doing that uh, what's your current status in terms of market share oh. so market share i think it varies from segment mm -hmm. to segment in heavy commercial vehicles we are around 54% in intermediate light commercial vehicles we are at around 38 to 39% buses and van all vans also we are at around same 38 39% okay. on that not girish always a pleasure talking to you same thank you, thank you so much thanks uh, there you heard uh, girish wog executive director at uh, the commercial vehicle major tata motors talking about the overall uh, the very comprehensive approach that tata motors is taking as part of the tata group towards sustainability and also kind of giving us a glimpse of the status of the uh, indian commercial vehicle market and what the uh, and and also shared his outlook what about what the industry could end up at, uh, at by the end of this financial year on that note thank you for watching this interview take care goodbye